did you notice all those cool cameras? Well, let me show you how you can add in all kinds of cameras to your project. So under the Stage tab, look for the camera, and notice you have several different types of cameras that you can add into your project. So let's just add one play. Notice how the camera has its own animation and movement that you can put into the program. Now, first, let's take a look at Preview Camera. Now, Preview Camera is not actually meant for recording the action. It's just only for the director, you, to look around the scene and try to see what you want to change or whatever. So that's why it's named Preview Camera. <laughs> All right, so Preview Camera, you can zoom in, you can move around, you can also orbit around. You can also rotate the camera, so you can just go anywhere you want to in your project just to see what you want. But remember, when you want to actually record the action, you need to use Camera 01 or something. So for instance, we have a avatar down there, so let's use this to quickly locate her. And no, notice we can look at the front, back, side, underneath her, or we can just home in on her and have another angle at her. Alright, so another cool feature I really want to show you is called the walk fly camera, or the fly walk camera, or whichever way you want to call it. So here, if I press the walk camera, now when the camera is now anchored to the terrain, and as I use the WASD controls, I can walk around the scene at the height that I chose and it can simulate how someone would walk through the scene. This is a way that you can look around your scene or you can use this to record the action. So just use the walk camera and you can walk around your scene like this, take a look at the pyramids. But uh, feel free to try any other kind of camera angle with the walk or the fly camera. Okay, so switching over to the fly camera, you can look around in this scene, and now we can use the same WASD controls, as well as the mouse, to choose which direction I want to fly the camera. Again, you can use this to record the action, or just to preview the scene. Okay, so now let's take a look at adding in more cameras. Now this is camera 01, and you can use the timeline to position the camera that you want. So at this position of the timeline, I want the camera to be at this upper position, then at this time on the timeline, I want the camera to pan around like so. So let's watch how the animation for the camera works. Goes up to the new position and then pans around. So you can make any kind of animation and movement for your cameras. Alright, now let me tell this avatar, this fighter guy, to walk over here. Alright, that's pretty cool, right? But I want to use this to show you some cool things that we have for our cameras. So let's go back under stage, back to camera. And let's scroll down to right here at look at. So we can tell the camera and pick a target like the avatar. And we can now tell the animation for the avatar to start moving. And notice how the camera stays in its position, but its focus remains on the target. And you can always set the camera free. Now another one that we have is called linking the camera. So we can link the camera to our avatar. And notice as the avatar moves, the camera stays with him. But let me give you a quick tip. Instead of linking the camera to his head, let's link it to its bone root. That way, whenever the avatar is moving, the camera stays with the avatar, but it's not bouncing up and down like his head was. Alright, so let's take a look at something else now. Let's move back over here. Oh, I want to also show you one more thing. The link camera, you can also put it behind the avatar like so to get that play to create computer game kind of feel or just get the, the perspective of your, of your avatar. Okay, I want to show you something called depth of field. Now depth of field is also on the modify tab for the camera. And notice we can pick a target for our depth of field, such as this first target here, and move the timeline along and we can choose a different target. Oh no, let's choose the same one. And then move it a little further down and let me show you how we can choose a second target. Right? Let me stop this and play it back for you. And you can notice how the depth of field changes for the first target now and then it will switch over to the second target, which is a pretty cool effect for your cameras. See how it's looking at the second camera? I mean the second focus. All right. Now, the cameras all have lens, and we have several built-in lenses, but always you can choose your own special lens as well. Now I'm going to show you something pretty cool. We have the vertigo effect that we can create using our lenses. So, first move the camera all the way back like this. 24 millimeters and then shift the camera back forward to our avatar and it takes a few adjustments but we can basically back up a little bit notice how the camera still it 
changes its animation for the lens, but we want the avatar to still stay close to the camera, so we can't. We have to go back to the timeline and adjust the, the position of the avatar, but notice how the focus behind the avatar changes, which gives you that really cool vertigo effect. So let me get this perfect and press play and watch what happens. Alright, you see that cool vertigo effect? So it just takes a little bit of timing and a little bit of a, some um, imagination and you can create any kind of vertical effect or camera effect with the lenses. Alright, so here's another thing I want to show you. Notice we want to take a look at the woman taking her bath. <clears throat> yes, we are. Uh, yeah. Anyway, but notice that there is a wall in our way. So let's use something called clipping planes. We don't want the wall in our way, so we adjust the clipping planes. And pretty soon, there, there you go. Now you notice that the wall has disappeared. This way, if there is something in your way and you want that shot, you can just use the clipping planes. But don't go too far because you end up cutting away everything from your entire scene. Alright, now I'm going to show you a quick video and I want you to try to identify as many different kinds of cameras that are being used. Alright, here you go.